Well, that concludes our webinar today. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just kidding. What's for lunch? Yeah. What is for lunch? Mmm. Dibbles and pips. And interest rate decreases are for lunch. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. Nothing like an interest rate decrease to tide you over. Oh, yeah. I'm going to test out looking at the screen. So. For all of those of you who are looking, uh, timed window, right? And then I'm going to, let's see here. I know I'm going to do this wrong, so give me a break if I get it wrong. Now, what I want to know is if anyone can see what we are looking at. We should be looking at a picture of support and resistance and this is the pound yen daily chart so I'm going to click OK so you should see a chart with pound yen a trend line and that's what you should see I'm going to go back to hotcom so this probably will disappear after I do that yeah woohoo and if I'm correct you do not still see it Correct? You do not see it any longer? All right. Okay. Wow. Do you still see it now? It's working fantastic. Very nice. Rob and Hotcom are great friends now. Well, let's not get out of control here. <laughs> but it's possible that Hotcom and I have reached a detente. That's correct. Hotcom and Rob will now be in charge of the Middle Eastern peace process. Buddies forever. That's correct. Great. Oh, lottery video. Done. Very nice. Let's see how this turned out. Oh, look at the quality on that. Oh, that's going to be a great video. And it's only one gigabyte. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Are we going to take a break around the interest rate announcement? Um, Barry, the interest rate announcement will be long after we are done with this webinar. The interest rate announcement is around 2.15 Eastern time. So Barry, um, this webinar will go from about 12 noon, which is it, it's two minutes away from 12 noon, all the way up until about 11.45. Now, at 1.30 Eastern Time at robbooker.com slash radio, um, Dave and I are going to do a live broadcast from the steps of the U.S. Federal Reserve. Yeah. Or if we can't make it over there, um, we'll just do it right from where we're sitting now. And we're going to do a live radio broadcast with some guest speakers and analysts. Yep. Including Scotty from Star Trek, a soap opera actor, and some things. Barry, no problem. I'm still trying to connect Eastern time to my, to my local body time, so don't feel uh, bad at all. It's good to have you here, Barry. Lola, nice to have you here, too. And Kim. And Mustafa. And Nan. And j -Bo, And Giselle. Giselle, that's a great name. Hey, Mark. Moon time. Yeah, what time is it on the moon? I have no idea. Does time travel differently on the moon? Time exists differently, I guess you... Who is my echo? Would you, would you get older faster? If you want to know who my echo is, we'll look him up right here. Dave Murphy. Official home of Dave Murphy and his music. Dave Murphy... Hip. Whoops. There is no time in the universe. That's awesome. <laughs> Sweet answer. That's what I'm looking for. Piptopia. Um. I don't think I have a home page. I don't think you do have a home page. Let's see here. Piptopia. 
uh, video. Mm. So you want to know who Dave is? Well, people, I'll show you who Dave is. There's Dave right here. This is Dave. Yeah. Right there. That's Dave. Say hi, Dave. Hello. I know how to predict things just through taste and especially pizza. Yeah, if you haven't seen this video, definitely go to uh, um, this link. Let me copy link location. And that will help you understand who Dave is a lot better. We could start. Please make a normal start for the recording. Great. Um, Maud, I'm going to ask Maud one more question. Maud, do I need to hit anything or a recording button or anything to start off the recording? Do I need to do anything special? Oh, wonderful. Nothing special is necessary. Welcome, everyone. Um, this is Rob. And this is Dave. And this is the Support and Resistance Update. And we're very happy that you've joined us today. We've um, prepared some especial um, things for you. And we're excited to have you join us today. We know your time is valuable. We know you're busy. And uh, we want to go over some charts. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive right into Support and Resistance Overviews. We're going to look at some live charts. We're going to look at longer term charts. And we're going to talk about um, a couple different strategies that we use on a regular basis um, to do support and resistance trading. So without further ado, or with only a little bit ado, show the screen. No problem. Yeah, we're going to show the screen right now. We're going to show the pound yen daily chart. Now. I'm just going to ask a quick question. Can you see the pound yen chart? Just type in yes if you can. Just a few of you will suffice. No, you cannot. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Great. All right. Okay, uh, Frederick, I'm sorry that you can't, um, but uh, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully things will improve. Hopefully things will change. Here's my prediction. Here's my bold prediction. We're starting this off with bold. Hey, Tom D. I think that's Tom D. All right. I think that's Tom D. Tom, if that's you, looking forward to seeing some more of your photography. Yes. Bold prediction numero uno. Here it is. If the pound yen falls to 219, right down here in this zone, and I can't draw that zone uh, without going off the screen, where it hit this low before, if it falls to that level, I boldly predict a bounce upwards of at least 50 points. 50 point profit target, 50 point stop loss. Why is that, we ask? Well, that's called that's, upper support. Yeah, upper support. Or lower support. This is just a simple support line drawn from where the currency pair fell but could go no further. Do you remember back in August, when the subprime mortgages all across the world blew up. And I'd like to say a word about that a little bit later. But remember when that happened, the carry trade blew up. Let's say a word about that right now. Here's how the carry trade and mortgages are connected. When the mortgage crisis erupted, what happened was hedge funds in particular and large banks who ran internal hedge funds had problems having enough capital. Basically, what happened was, hold on just a second. Hello, beautiful. I'm good. I'm doing a webinar. Can I call you back? Okay. Call you back. Bye. That was my wife. I just wanted to make sure I answered the phone for her. Um, here's the deal. The pound yen fell at the same time the Dow fell, at the same time all these hedge funds had a problem. And the reason for that was that hedge funds who are heavily invested in collateral debt obligations or structured investment vehicles or mortgage-backed securities, those firms had problems coming up with enough capital. They were in danger of getting a margin call. Margin call. If you think margin calls are bad for currency traders, they're especially bad for hedge funds. They're especially embarrassing for a hedge fund. And when the whole subprime mortgage crisis blew up, Hedge funds had to meet their obligations. Their trades were in the toilet, and they had to meet their obligations. One thing that hedge funds have also been heavily invested in is pound yen, meaning borrowing yen, buying pound. Borrowing yen, buying securities denominated in euros or pounds or dollars. 
And that's why they started getting out of these trades was they had to meet obligations to shore up their financials and everything fell as a result. What, what's really happening here is the whole universe in the financial system is now interconnected. We are all interconnected. Welcome to the, to the machine. The singularity is near. The world financial system is now so connected, so tightly wound, that a problem in one region can spill over very quickly into another region. The other problem that happened, and this is really getting a little bit deeper, but I want to describe this, is that um, there was an inverted yield curve early on in the year, which meant that it was very difficult to find places to put capital. That's, that's, a, that's a short version of a longer story. Well, where did that capital go? It went into riskier and riskier investments. And when things blew up in August, things got really risky, really fast, and people had to meet their obligations. Now, why do I bring all this up, Dave? Because it has a lot to do with today. Today, Today's Fed decision is all about risk. It's all about risk in the market. It's all about the fact that today the Fed either will or will not do something to allay the fears of investors all over the world. Ben Bernanke is playing the mother of the financial system. And what kind of mother he is depends on what kind of trades you're in. And we won't re respond with we won't any, respond with any vulgarity. any multiple choice of um, right vulgar words. If the Fed makes a mess up today, and believe me, the Fed can mess up. They've done it in the past, and they've done it in the recent past. If the Fed messes up and scares the market, let's say the Fed doesn't cut rates at all, doesn't cut rates at all, and states a greater concern with inflation. We're going to see wild, wild fluctuations. Or let's say the Fed goes further than what's expected and does a 75 basis point cut. We're going to see big amounts of volatility. In general, though, I believe that we're headed for a further reduction in the carry trade, that the pound yen is headed for a further fall. I don't, I don't say that because I'm guaranteeing it. I'm not basing this on a trade right now. But I think it's very likely that we see a, a, a substantial and continued fall in the pound yen in the next two to three months, in the longer term. And this is a daily chart. We don't really care on the daily chart what exactly happens today. We're not going to make a trade based on the news today. But we do care about the longer term. So I believe if it falls to 219, we're going to see a bounce. Let it fall all the way through 219.30 and get down to 219, a buy trade, a 50 pip profit target, a 50 pip stop loss. What happens if it's instead it rises up to this recent high at 241? If it rises, Dave, up to that recent high at 241, 241.50 or so, it's the same thing only in reverse. Long-term support and resistance used for short-term trading. If you trade box options at a currency dealer or you trade exotic options, let's say you, you're over 21 and you trade exotic options. You could trade box options that say that the 241.50 level or the 219.00 level are unlikely to be broken um, within the next, say, three weeks. And you can, you can play that because these are boundaries that are likely to maintain um, any type of attack. Now, they're not going to sustain any attack that's prolonged, meaning if it bashes up against these levels over and over and over again, we're just as likely to break through them and cause a big slide downward. And that brings us to our next point. If instead of bouncing off the 219 level and giving us 50 pips on a rebound, it breaks and closes through that mark, yeah. we're going to see a massive, massive liquidation of the carry trade. That's the last um, bastion of support. That's the Alamo. Once the Alamo goes down, you know, all of Texas all goes down. down. Which I don't know if that made any sense, but that's, that's a big level. Now, we can still get 50 pips out of this, even if the currency pair breaks and closes through, but I want to watch for that. Meaning, on the 60-minute chart, when it drops down, and if it drops down and hits the 219.00 uh, mark and bounces, by the end of the day, it might actually go all the way through 219 and close through 219 and create a short trade. If it closes beyond this long-term level of support, this upper support, it's headed for, it's, it's really headed for the, um, the hills or the valleys or the whatevers. Um, I, I would predict that we would see a substantial decline 
um, all the way back down to levels that we haven't seen for quite some time, um, meaning lows all the way back going down to the 190s, um, at least at least the round numbers 210 and 200. What would a stop loss be like on those trades? If it closes back above that daily support, above the 219 mark, if it closes in the opposite direction, um, that would be an opportunity to go ahead and um, get out of the trade at a loss. Remember, trading from the daily charts really makes us or um, requires us to be far more judicious in our trade size. Meaning if you're going to trade on a daily chart and go for a thousand pips, remember you might have a 200 point stop loss and that might require you to reduce the size of your trade so you're not risking that much on the trade itself. Dave, so someone could withstand a 200 pip stop loss mm -hmm. in exchange for a 500 or 1000 pip gain but wouldn't really have to worry about um, that it's 200 points. If you're trading for 10 cents a pip or 20 cents a pip on a $10,000 account, those numbers of pips for a drawdown doesn't, don't really matter. No, that's, and it's totally reasonable. Totally reasonable to take care of. And a lot of people say sometimes, well, I can't trade long term because I don't have a big enough account. Well, if you trade with a firm that lets you have infinite flexibility in your trade size, you can and will and must trade long term. What's the other problem with shorting the pound yen long term, Dave? Interest. You got to pay interest. So the longer you hold a position like that, the more you got to pay interest. So what we could do instead is we could look at a currency pair that doesn't charge as much interest and work on a similar type setup. Look how the euro yen looks very similar to the pound yen. We could do the same thing with the euro yen, only looking for a bounce off of 159 or 158.50 for 50 pips and selling long term on a close below 158 all the way down to 150 or 149.39 but the round number 150 is a great number that would be a long term trade and the interest payments that you have to make to hold that trade don't cost you as much you don't like holding that trade with interest at all fine look for an opportunity instead to buy the currency pair on that move down to 158 or buy it on a close above 167. You can see how drawing these longer term levels of support and resistance around these pivot areas gives us an opportunity to trade um, long term and short term. Short term trades which are bounces off those levels and longer term trades which are breaks and closes through those levels. Dave, could they look on a, on a bounce trade? Could someone look for a candle pattern, a reversal pattern at the top or at the bottoms of these? Oh, yeah. Those could be great trades. Now, if you're familiar with um, candlestick patterns or candle line charts, <clears throat> Dave and Steve Nissen and I just did a seminar in North Carolina, and I thought that the material that I teach kind of meshed really nicely with what Steve teaches. And the candlestick patterns, those reversal patterns, those engulfing patterns, or those um, pregnant fairy or angry boss or um, four-legged octopus candle patterns, or whatever they were. The hungry, hungry hippo. The hungry, thing. hungry hippo. Right. Those types of candle, the reversal patterns can mesh really nicely with these longer-term support and resistance levels. If you're looking for a bounce, you can drop down to the four-hour chart, for example, and you could look for a bounce off of this top level plus a candlestick reversal pattern and I think that's just a really nice system that complements itself. It's testable. You could go back in a charting program and test whether that works. You could see how well you do at it. Um, I think that would be a marvelous idea. Now, we're really excited to hear the questions that you have today um, and I'm going to take a moment right now. I'm going to unshare my screen and I'm going to focus on some questions right now. Um, here we go. Um, Barry says, if you lose, it would be support hosed. Right, right. Wakey, wakey. Pizza order. It was me. Ho, ho. I don't know if those are any uh, questions or comments, but they are certainly funny. Boyke says, that's one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. That's right. That's the, that's the bare minimum. We'd like better than that, Boyke. In fact, on the pound yen, on those longer-term bounce trades, you could really look for something on the order of 75 pips of gain for 50 pips of stop or even 100 pips of gain for 50 pips of stop. And Dave, 
to know if they're really good at that, they need to do some testing. Yeah, lots of back testing. Uh, Guido, buongiorno Guido, benvenuto al seminario. Rob, why do you look at the pound yen when the U.S. interest report is about? Um, I'm looking longer term here. Um, I'm not looking at a short term trade. I'm looking at a longer term trade. This, these trades that we just discussed, they're not going to trigger for weeks, probably. So it doesn't matter. Indeed, Rob, in scaling and in building a position would alleviate the barrier a bit in nice increments of, say, a mini lot at a time. CVJ, that is awesome. That is awesome. Scaling in is the way to go. That is awesome. Um, Ray says, I heard your seminar in North Carolina was superb. And Ray, let me tell you, it was. After this is all over, if you go to robbooker.com slash radio, we will put up some videos from uh, the seminar um, and some interesting things and tidbits and stuff like that for all those of you who are joining us here today. We'd love to fill you in on some of what we did there. We also had a camera crew come and record it, and it was a lot of fun. I'd like to look at some more charts. I love your questions. Please write in and send us questions that you have. We'd love to answer questions about any specific currency pairs that you'd like to look at. We'd love to give you marital or relationship advice. Anything you'd like to look at, Dave, we'd be more than happy to look at. Yeah. Especially currency pairs and whatnot. I'd like to review a trade type um, right now. I'm going to share my camera. My, not my camera. I'm going to share the chart. You should be able to see right now the US dollar, Canadian dollar, 240 minute chart. If you are not able to see that, please raise your hand. Oh, that's right. I can't see your hand. If you can see it, please let me know. That's the radio link for later on. OK, you can see it. Wonderful. What I'd like to describe to you right now is something that I like to call the Manitoba trade. The Manitoba trade is as follows. Let's assume that you've been able to draw a channel based on these highs here and these lows here. And you've drawn a support and resistance channel. This is a rising channel, and you've drawn it, and you love it. You love it like you loved your first car. And the currency pair jumps upwards out of a rising channel. Jumping outwards from a rising channel is like trying to run uphill. The further you go, the more exhausted you become. And the more likely it is that you're going to drop back down inside of that channel. When you, drop, when you see the currency pair drop back down inside of that channel, and here is that glorious moment, that fateful day on the four-hour chart. I'm going to color it something special. When you see that candle close inside that um, channel all over again, it's a sell trade. It's a, called a Manitoba trade because I just named it after a province in Canada. The profit target is the bottom of the channel. That's the eventual profit target. But you could take profit at the first fibble, which is the, middle, the top middle line here, the last fibble, which is right here. And you can see how, Dave, those fibble lines come back. Oh, yeah. Why they do always they, hit those fibble lines. Why do those fibble lines come back? Why are they... They're really important because they're Fibonacci lines within the channel. Right. These are Fibonacci retracement areas within the channel. And we call them fibbles because they're levels and they're fib levels. And Max, our friend and uh, good trader, and, and uh, he named it fibbles. And I think that's a great name. So that's called a Manitoba trade. When a currency pair jumps outside of a channel and then crosses back inside the channel, that's a Manitoba. Where does the stop go? Well, ideally, the stop goes above the highs that the currency pair made before it went back inside the channel. That's ideal. Now, that can be sometimes, in this instance, it closed back inside the channel at um, about 1.0100. And it had about a 100 pip stop and about a 130 pip profit target. That's good risk So reward. that's a reasonable risk reward yeah. ratio. And you could continue to move your stop lower as the currency pair hits Tibble. This trade is... Um, just barely right now unprofitable, but at, at one point in time it went as low as as well as about seven, 60 or 70 points. Yeah. Um, that's a Manitoba trade. I'm going to check, Dave, and let's see if we've got any questions. Sounds good. 
All right. Um, while you're looking at that chart, Jeff says, do you use the Doji bearish for SR? Jeff, I've just started to dive into the world of candle line charts. Um, it's not an area of expertise. Um, I do believe that I learned a great deal from Steve Nissen in the seminar. And, um, and I think that uh, there's something to be said for looking at dojis on that support and resistance bounce trading. Yeah, I think those are fantastic. Candle patterns are just fantastic for this type of trading. Um, Arian Ansar kindly asks me to please type again the radio link. That's robbooker.com slash radio. All right. Boyke says, have you given up using moving averages? Oh, no. Absolutely not. In fact, um, uh, I love support and resistance, and I love moving averages. And I use a set of moving averages for, support, for um, moving average trading, which are called the um, Arizona rules. And that's outside the scope of this webinar. And I'm not here to sell anything. To, are we here to sell anything to anybody, Dave? No. No, we're not here to sell you anything. But it is covered in the training that I do online. But I'm not here to sell you anything, so please don't take it as a sales pitch. Um, Jens or Gens asks, um, can you show a Winnipeg? Oh, Boyke, you can ask anything. Please ask us any question whatsoever. Boyke asks, could I show a Winnipeg? And the answer is, most certainly yes. Here we go. Here's a Winnipeg. In fact, Dave, this is a Winnipeg trade that we talked about in the FX Street blog. Yeah. If you don't mind, everyone, what I'd like to do is cross over to the Postcards blog. And I'd like to, let's see if I can get this to come up. This is the Postcards from the Right Edge blog. And this is the free blog at fxstreet.com. And um, we talked about the dollar CAD four-hour channel entry, um, a, a, a idea on the pound Swiss, the dollar kid ascending. See, before it broke out, Dave, we had this channel all set up here. And we would encourage anyone who's interested in this type of trading um, to, uh, Go to take a look at the postcards.fxstreet.com. And I'll type that in here, postcards dot fxstreet.com. We love FX Street, and that's where the blog is located. All right, back to um, talking about no. the Winnipeg, Winnipeg trade. All right, Dave, if you've got a descending chart, right. if you've got this descending chart, we've got a channel that we can draw. Now, the reason we can draw this channel is because we've got a, a high here, a high here, a high, a low there, and a low there. And so I drew the, ch the channel based on those lines. Now, if you need help or you need assistance drawing channels, what I would encourage you to do is look at some of the archived webinars that we've got at Piptopia.com under videos or the archived FX Street um, webinar that they so kindly archived, and I'm so excited that they did. There's loads of examples. Loads of examples. Lots and lots. When this currency pair breaks outside of and above the channel, that's called a Winnipeg trade. Winnipeg trade number one is a break outside or a close above a descending channel. We want to buy above a descending channel because it's a counter trend reversal of the trend type move, and we would buy here. That buy trade would come at 110.33. Okay, so we buy there at 110.33. There's a second buy here. Oh, I, I don't know the exact number, so I'm going to remove that. There's a second buy here at 109.60. When it falls and hits the bottom, I mean, when it falls and hits the old top of the channel, this right here, what I'm going to turn blue, that is a Winnipeg move. It's a pullback, a throwback, or a move back down to the top of the channel. What we have found is that over time, a currency pair that breaks above a descending channel will rise and hit a series of Winnipeg lines, or Fibonacci extensions of the outside of the channel. Let's see how we did those. In the channel properties box, I drew markers for the 200% retracement. That's two times the size of the channel. So if the currency pair breaks out of a 100 pip channel, and goes 100 points, that's the 200% mark. Or the 1.236, or the 1.382, or the 
or the 1.618. Those are all fib levels on the outside of the channel. And you'll notice that price tends to move in the direction of those lines after breaking outside of a channel. Now you can break out upwards from a descending channel, or you can break out lower from a rising channel. Let's see if there are any questions. We encourage you to ask questions or ask us to take a look at your favorite currency pair. FX Lamer asks, is this an inverted head and shoulders? Well, let's take a look at that. I think what you're referring to is the, um, the dollar yen. And what you could say is, let's make this, let's replicate this chart and let's look at um, a traditional price pattern. If you like price patterns, then um, that's fantastic. I think what they were looking at, Dave, is that this could possibly be the neckline of yeah. a head and shoulders pattern. Shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder. Knees and toes? Knees and toes. And that would be, let's right click on this line here. Let's extend it to the right. And this would be a breakout of a neckline on a head and shoulders pattern. Beautiful. Yep. FX Lamer, thank you for bringing that up. Is something similar, Nicholas asks, occurring on the euro dollar? Well, Dave, let's take a look at the euro dollar. All right. But let's draw a channel on the euro dollar. I'd like to use this bottom here, Dave, as the bottom of my channel. But I can't. But you can't. Didn't work perfectly. So, nope. we, so we got a low here and a low over here, and that worked out pretty well. So that's the culprit. Ooh, that was weird. Um, let's see here. Oh, we don't see the whole image. No Prabalo. I'm going to make this happen. There you go. There's nice. your image. Sorry, everyone. I drew the channel based on this. A high here, high here, high, a low there, low there and a low sort of right there. If this currency pair closes above the top of this channel, that's a buy trade. That's a Winnipeg trade coming out above. If it closes below the channel, Dave, this was a Manitoba move right here. Mm -hmm. This right here was a perfect example of a Manitoba. 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 If it closes outside the channel but then goes back inside, it's likely to go all the way back up. Well, we didn't have this channel now that I think of it, because we didn't have this high over here. Sure. But that's, you know, that's a retrospect example. Sorry, doesn't count. Let's look at some more questions. Um, did not see the last chart. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, I'm going to have to stop sharing because it's screwing everything up. Um, let's see, here we go. Do you use a trailing stop on the four-hour time frame? Oh, you can. I'm not a big trailing stop kind of person. It always seems like the market knows where my trailing stop is. So yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of trailing stuff. Yeah, not a fan. Uh, that looks like Murray Math, FXer. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Um, could be. Image is bad. It's got the image all taken care of. Please repeat the Manitoba. Sure, Maurice. We'll go back. And we'd love for those of you who have questions, please send us questions about your favorite currency pair. To review the rules for a Manitoba, the rules are currency pair... Currency pair breaks out of channel. Has to close outside of the channel. That's number one. Okay. Number two. Currency pair goes back inside channel. And then you sell. <clears throat> or you buy if it's going back inside of a channel the opposite direction. That's the Manitoba trade. The stop loss goes beyond the, the highest or lowest point the currency pair reached when it ventured outside the channel, and the profit target is the other side of the channel. You're more than welcome to move your stop as the currency pair travels inside of the channel. It's not something that I do a very good job of, and I prefer to either get out completely or stay in completely. Rob, did I travel to the Czech Republic in the summertime? No, I had to cancel the trip. I just became overwhelmed with all the traveling I did. Um, 
I'd love to go there. Oh, there was no chart. <clears throat> sorry. Here we go. Here we go. We'll go back over the rules. I'm sorry about that. I get. I forget to do that. To review the Manitoba again, the currency pair goes outside the channel, and then it comes back inside the channel. Once it goes outside the channel, you're waiting for it to jump back inside and close back inside the channel. Once it does that, it's a sell. The profit target is the opposite side, the other side of the channel, and the stop loss is above the highest point the currency pair reached before it broke back inside the channel. I'm sorry again about uh, messing up that uh, image. I need more coffee. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't drink any coffee. Um, how do you trade in a carry trade environment? Um, you, please, expound, or please expand upon that um, question, and I'd love to answer it. Um, do you use any indicators to compare support and resistance? No, when I'm trading support and resistance, it's the only thing that I do. Um, what is your active seminars website name, please, again? Um, I'm not here to sell anything, but if you want to go to the website, um, there's the website. Um, and I am going to do a seminar with Kathy Lean and Boris Schlossberg in March in New York City. This, but that's outside the scope of what we're talking about. All right, somebody, um, when do you use FIBO levels and channel FIBO levels? FX Flamer, you're coming up with a lot of good questions. I don't generally use Fibonacci levels. I generally just stick to the regular old channel Fib levels. It doesn't mean I think that Fib levels, regular Fib levels don't work. It just means that I don't use them. Um, let's go ahead and I'm now going to switch my charts, but I'm going to wait here. Um, uh, it's five minutes. I don't have a chart up, Maurice, so don't worry about it. There's no chart up right now. There's no chart that we should be looking at. Um, all right, let's go ahead and look at the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar. I don't have a chart up yet, but I'll tell you when I'm supposed to have one, and then you can tell me if we've got one. Oh, what was that? Holy majority. All right. Just take me a moment, and we'll get the four-hour chart up. All right. Um, let me know when you're there. I will take care of you as you are my brother. That's very kind of you, Guido. I can't wait to see you. All right. Here we go. Um, this is the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar. We are more than happy to look at and analyze some currency pairs that are interesting to you. Oops, wrong tool. You should be looking at an Australian dollar, U.S. dollar right now. It should be shared. Okay, here we go. We've broken outside of a channel. Once we break outside of that channel, we can take a buy trade right here. And you can target the next Winnipeg. We can target the next Winnipeg line. Let's add some more Winnipeg lines. It looks like we could use a one two, three, six level. I bet it hit that one, two, three, yeah. six level. Okay, it did. Um, now, if it falls here, everyone, if it falls down back lower and it hits the top of this old channel, that's a buy trade on a Winnipeg move. And the profit targets are these Winnipeg levels. It should rise at least as high as it was over here at 88.69 or so. It should rise at least that high, but it could go farther. Um, dollar CAD, if possible, says Peter. Sure, we could look at the dollar CAD. Do I use Andrew's pitchfork? Nope, I don't use Andrew's pitchfork, but I studied it extensively. I bought this crazy book, um, and uh, I, I looked at it, and I thought it was interesting. This is the dollar CAD. Someone asked us to look at it. I have no additional trades until the following. The currency pair does the following. If it breaks and closes below $1 and closes below the bottom of this channel, I'm selling it, and I'm selling it down to these Winnipeg levels. Yep, those look really good. Those look fantastic, and I'm going to share that chart with you right now. If the currency pair breaks below the bottom of this channel and below this um, horizontal level at $1, I'm going to sell it. Breaks and closes below the bottom of that, that's a sell trade for me. And I'm going to target these Winnipeg lines on the outside of the channel. Are the blue Stippled fibs. Those are yes. Those those um those are fib levels. Um, any other any other currency pairs you want to look at? I'm happy to look at. What I'm going to do now? It's going to take me a moment. 
but I'm going to look at the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. Ooh, this is a 15-minute chart. We'll look at something shorter term, although it's not my um, cup of tea. We are using XTIC charting software to draw these. You know what? I think we're going to get a channel on the short-term chart here. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty darn good. That's a reasonably good channel. Um, a sell trade is already in effect, and uh, the targets are these Winnipeg levels down here. If you're afraid to get in based on uh, you want to get in when it's rising, you could get in when it closes or breaks below 87.29. We could get in below that level and target more Winnipeg levels. Uh, one, let's just do two dot o o o down here. That could be the final target, the final resting place. That's a short-term view of the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. Here's a longer-term view on the four-hour chart. I'm going to remove all tools and uh, take a look at it. Hmm. Boy, this could be a really steep channel. Yeah. Woo, holy moly. That doesn't look very good. No, it doesn't look great. Um, no, there's nothing on the four hour here that makes sense to me like so. I would go back to, depending on the four hour chart, a buy at 83.17. Let's look even further out on the daily chart, if we can, and we'll see if there's any. Let me make sure. Um, let me make sure we're looking at this chart. Um, you know, a buy down here, a sell on a on a on a bounce off of the 91, 92 level right in there, just like those trades we were talking about before. I'd love a sell on a close below 80.00 with a target of this low all the way down here. That would work for me on the New Zealand dollar. Yeah, those look really good, actually. I'm going to turn off the camera so you can't see a chart and ask, answer some questions. Pound dollar, someone asks. Sure, we'll look at the pound dollar. And uh, does channel angle matter? No, the channel angle does not matter. Um, Arian asks, when I set the profit target and the stop loss, do I modify it or is it fixed? It's fixed. I don't really modify it very often. Um, that's just my personal style. And if Mod could let us know how much more time we have, um, that'll help us out a bit. I'm going to look up the pound dollar. There's no chart yet, but when we have it up, I'll let you know. And uh, that's the daily. Okay, there should be a chart open now. Let's take a look at the daily. Um, looks like a nice channel is developing like so. Yeah. Mm, that's pretty good. That's about as good as you get for a channel. That's a fairly significantly good buy opportunity. Yeah. If this currency pair jumps above 2.0518, I'm going to consider this a bounce off the bottom of the channel and we'll at least get to this first fibble. If we close below the bottom of this channel, I'd like to sell it and target these old support areas and these Winnipeg mines. Well, that's a good set. really well. Um, and if Maude could let us know how much more time we have, that will help us plan out the rest of the webinar. Um, someone wants to look at the um, uh, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, which I am more than happy to look at. Let's take a look at that. It's going to take me a moment to pull it up. see here. All right, we're just loading that up. All right. This is a severely, savagely descending currency pair. I'm gonna look um I'm going to look a little bit shorter term. I don't see anything on the on the longer time frame. I do think I see something on the shorter time frame here. Um, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, your spread is usually pretty wide on this currency pair. 
I think that's on its way up all the way to the top of the channel. I think that is probably trying to get up to probably 1400. We'll see how this closes. This top fibula is going to be an area of resistance. And what I might like to do is draw a level of resistance across here, drop down to a 30 minute or a 15 minute chart, and buy it on a close above that level. Let's see if we can load this chart fast enough. And buy it on a close above that level all the way up to the top. I think that would be um, a reasonable thing to do on this currency pair. Euro pound. Um, let's do euro pound. And then somebody asked a question about the uh, carry trade. I'm going to need a moment to pull up the chart. So bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this right from, from now on. Okay, the chart should be loading. Pound, uh, euro pound. Remember, your pips are worth twice as much on this currency pair. So don't go, don't go hog wild on this currency pair. Don't go crazy. Empty channel. Oops, sorry. Whoa, look at that 30-minute chart. Something funky has been going on. Something super funky has been happening. Just take me a moment to think through this. I'd like to draw maybe a channel here. Yeah, a really steep channel. Wow. I'd love a buy below the bottom of that steep channel. I'd love that. And I'd consider a, a buy trade. Um, so a sell below the bottom of the channel and a close below the bottom of the channel and a buy on a close above this level of resistance with the target all the way up at the top of the channel. That could be very nice. Any opinion on how much it's gonna, the, the madness with the carry trade is going to continue with equities? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I wish I, I, wish I did. I'm going to turn off the camera. Any concept of correction before entering a trade? I don't wait for any type of correction or anything like that before I enter a trade. I'm not necessarily interested in, um, in a correction or anything like that. I, I can go ahead and, and enter it. The Winnipeg trade, which we'll show. Why don't we show that again? Why don't I show that Winnipeg trade? Let's go back. It'll take me a moment to bring up the chart. My phone's ringing off the hook today, for goodness sake. Um, dollar yen. Let me come back and get the camera. Sometimes I'll wait for a correction like I did with the dollar yen falling back to the top of that box for a corrected trade. That's what I might like. So yes, that's the only time I might wait for a correction before I enter a trade, if that makes sense. Hopefully there'll be some other questions here, and we'll see what they are. Um, there are no other questions here. Um, all right, it's about 12.45. I'd love to take some time for some questions. If you have any other currency pairs that you'd like to look at, we'd love to look at those too. Um, in the meantime, I also want to just pull back up again. I want to pull up um, a picture. It's not, not going to be a great one. Um, let's do this. Camera. Um, here's postcards from the right edge. This is the blog at uh, fxstreet.com. It's postcards.fxstreet.com. It's a free blog. I wanted to also take you to the FX Street forums. In the forums at FX Street, I'm um, helping to uh, run a note card trade plan forum. And let's see here. Take me a moment. It's the note card trading plan. We'll go to the last page here. This is where, on a regular basis, I plan um, my day of trading. And I then post a picture of the note card that is my trade plan. And you can see, oh wow, there's a bunch of them here today. Oh, that's great. Um, see if I can find my plan for the day. Hmm. Maybe it didn't get posted. Um, OK. Well, um, that's, that's the blog where I'm planning trades every day and posting my note card trade plan. I wonder where my post went. I thought I posted for today, but maybe I didn't click submit. But um, that's, if you go to that forum, um, you'll see well, I didn't post it. I'm posting it right now. 
Let's see if I can get it up here. You won't see the whole page here. It'll just take a moment. And should be on the last page here. Oh, forget it. <laughs> it's not there. I posted it, but it didn't show up. But that's where I post my trade plan for the day. Um, do I have any website besides the blog on FX Street? Yes, I have a website at robbooker.com. I have a website at pitopia.com. And uh, I do still have... Um, uh, an opinion about 10 pips, but that's sort of outside the scope of the seminar, the webinar that we're doing today. We once again invite you to join us today um, at robbooker.com slash radio. We're going to do a, uh, a live update while the um, Fed announcement takes place. We'd love to have you join us. Um, it's 1246. We'll stay on here for a few moments if you have some questions. I can't get the, um, the uh, ZAR. I can't get that currency pair up. So if you've got some questions about other currency pairs, I'd love to hear your questions, just let me know. And while we're talking here, I'd like to try to post my um, note card trade plan one more time. Note card plan again, and I'm going to try to make a blog entry, Dave, um, where I actually can get my post up. Let's see. Note card. You just remember to hit submit this time. Thanks. <laughs> Upload. All right. Close this window. Um, should have an attachment in there. Here is another try. And then I'm going to post my reply. And we'll see if that ends up. There we go. My note card is in there. All right. I'm wrapping up. Um, I've been told um, that I should be wrapping up now. I will be back next month for another webinar. And Barry, I do not ignore long wicks. I go ahead and incorporate those, and I do use those long wicks. Um, appreciate that you've all been here. It's been a, a, a pleasure to have you with us. Great to see Eric. Great to see Frederick and Boyke and some of the people that we see on a regular basis here. We appreciate your questions. We invite you to uh, stay tuned for whatever the webinar is next on FX Street. Good have luck, a great everyone. Day. We'll be back around. Hey, Eddie. Good to see you there, too.